Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? Yes. You are enjoying your leading edge position? Yes. You are enjoying how life calls new desire forward in you? You are enjoying that natural expansion of your own desire? You like clarifying it? You like tuning to your desire? Do you realize that that is what deliberate creating is? It's lining up with your desire? You like knowing that you are the creator of your own experience? Do you? Yes. Not so much, huh? <laughs> well, we know. We watch you. At first, it's invigorating to realize that you create your own reality until you see what a mess you're making of it. <laughs> And then you'd like to blame someone else. Mother, it's mother. It's mother. Well, we like knowing that you create your own reality, and we like you knowing that you do. And the more consciously aware you are of that, then the happier your day-to-day -day experience is. The less you need things around you to be a particular way so that you can merely observe good feeling things and feel good the less you do of that then the more powerful you are really because the more ability you have to keep yourself steady anyway so many people are living very conditional lives where their moods or attitudes follow their observation of things and then they set out really fervently attempting the impossible, which is to control the conditions around them so that they can have some measure of control about how they feel. But it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work out well for them. And we want you to not be among those conditional observers of life. We want you to let your observation please you because it's from that observation that you come to your own conclusion of your own preferences. But once those preferences have hatched within you, once you begin to have ideas of what you want, then it's a matter of deliciously focusing and feeling yourself aligning with your desire while you feel law of attraction responding to your focus and the momentum of your desire building within you even before it manifests. If you could get hooked on that, we're calling it that sweet spot, that feeling of your desire in the process of becoming, even before it's had that last bump in the manifestation. If you could love it in the becoming, then, oh, the satisfaction that you're going to feel when it becomes is going to knock your socks off. And not only that, not only are you going to have so much more satisfaction as it unfolds, as it makes that last movement into where you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. But all the way along the way, even before it was visible to you, it was known to you by your enthusiasm for it. It was known to you by your appreciation of the idea of it. But it was not visually translatable quite yet. You couldn't hear it or see it or smell it or taste it or touch it. But you still felt the joy of its becoming. That is our desire for you. Because you are, we all are, but we're talking to you. You are always going to be in a state of on your way to the manifestation of something more. And if you have developed a habit of being unhappy till you get there, mm, then not only do you make your life miserable as you're always yearning for something not yet achieved, but you slow it way, 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 way down. And then you have to develop qualities you're not very good at this either, such as patience and endurance. We don't want you to be patient. We want you to be joyously romping full force toward the things that you want because the cooperative components of the universe are doing that on your behalf. So there are some questions that you must have about why you would hold yourself in vibrational discord to a natural and swift unfolding of your desires. And we can speak it to you simply by just saying, you offer opposing thoughts about your desires. And those opposing thoughts that you offer about your desires 
you might call them beliefs. I want this, but I just don't believe it. And usually the reason you don't believe it is because you haven't witnessed yourself experiencing it before. And so the belief that you hold is laced in so much opposition to your desire that the term for that state of consciousness has to be doubt. I want this, but I doubt it. Well, when you want something and doubt it, you hold yourself in a very uncomfortable tension. And of course, you're not wanting it and doubting it in the same moment because you can't hold that convoluted of a thought till it manifests and you observe it. Because you're thinking one thought at a time, really. So when you are thinking of something that you desire, the question is, how does it feel when you're thinking the thought? And the way it feels is your clue about whether this is a desire thought or whether this is a doubt thought. So recently we have begun offering an analogy that when life helps you to know that you want something, it's like you put an engine on you, the train. You're a train, you're on a nice flat surface, there's no hill to climb. It's just a nice flat surface. And when you manifest, now you're going to think that's an odd word, but it isn't. When you manifest a desire, when a thought comes into your mind and you're thinking, I really would like that, that's like plunking a powerful engine on your train going that way. But if the next thought that follows is, but I don't think I can do that, then you plunk an equally powerful engine on the other end of your train going in the opposite direction so you don't gather any momentum. You don't gather any enthusiasm. Where if you said, I think I would like to have this, and the reason that it is attractive to me is because, and I get the idea that I would enjoy it for this reason and this reason and this reason. Now, another engine, another engine, another engine, more momentum, more momentum, more momentum, and you are becoming, because of your not contradicted broadcast, which Law of Attraction is responding to, you are becoming more powerful. Your point of attraction is more powerful when you don't contradict it. When you say, I want it, but you don't gain any momentum. There's no power. Your point of attraction doesn't improve. You just, as far as you are concerned, stand still. Now, Nothing is ever really standing still. What's happening is there is force going this way and force going this way. So there's a lot going on. You're just not going anywhere because you are contradicting your own thoughts. Now, you don't have to do that. And the reason that you do do that is because you're addicted to manifestations. We would like to help you change your addiction to mood or attitude or the way you feel. We would like you to be more aware and more in desire of feeling momentum than seeing the results of what momentum accomplishes, just for a little while. If you could just skip the, I want this to manifest, I want to see it in my driveway. I want this to manifest, I want to move into it right now. If you could just hold off on needing the manifestation to be happening right now in that full manifested awareness. If you could just enjoy your journey to it. Now, we've talked about this. So many have talked about how the joy is in the journey. But today, it is our desire that you really get that, that you really come to know that you are an extension of source energy and that source energy is flowing to you and through you at all times. And when you are allowing it, you are at your optimum feeling of happiness. And you came here not to get stuff done. You came here for happiness. But we don't know any of you who can be here and not have life show you things that you want. In other words, you don't feel happiness if you don't have an engine of desire calling life force through you. So it's nice the way it's set up because you can't be here and not have that happen. You could not. None of you can. No one ever could. You cannot turn your desire factor off. You can't turn it off because the contrast that you are living in is just causing you to focus and get those juices flowing. You can't turn that off. 
But you've got a choice about whether, since the desire is flowing through you, you have a choice about whether you join the desire and let the momentum go and let your desire naturally unfold, or whether you, in human terms, use all of your wisdom and all your objectivity and all your long practice in order to prove to yourself that this desire that you hold is not possible because engine, because engine, because engine, because engine. You are too smart for your own good. You've gathered up too much fat to contradict your own desires. When you're little, you don't, though. When you're little, you just want unabashed until the big ones get you. <laughs> till they teach you objectivity. Till they teach you what real life is about. Till they teach you that you just don't get what you want just because you want it. But that's just their point of view. So, we are eager to talk with you about whatever matters to you. There's nothing off limits here, and there is no order of business in the sense that it must be a particular way. It's going to be a natural, organic, collective consciousness unfolding. It is our absolute knowing that together we are going to take thought beyond what it has ever been before, which is thrilling to us and to many of you. It is also our knowing that during the course of this time that we are together, that some of, in some cases much of, the resistance that you've been practicing without even knowing you were doing it is going to begin to subside. And your natural momentum toward who you really are and what you really want will come about. Since you've been here in this physical body, you've been exploring and coming to many conclusions about what you want. And you've been launching these projections. We've been calling them rockets of desire. But you've been transmitting this vibration, not even spoken. A transmission of desire that is more refined even than words can sometimes articulate it. So you've been launching these rockets of desire. And the source within you has gathered them, is holding them, is knowing them, is being them. And... Because your own inner being is the knower and the holder of your true desires, law of attraction is responding to that, you might call it a collection of desires. And law of attraction being the engine of the universe, law of attraction responding to those desires means that you have, whether you know it or not, and whether you like it or not, you have expanded that far into more. You have evolved vibrationally while you may not have yet caught up with it in terms of your physical manifestation. You might not be able to see it yet, but it exists just the same, and your inner being is the evidence of it. And more important, the mood, the attitude, the knowing, the vibrational stance of your inner being is the proof of it. So when you accidentally, usually, or deliberately stumble into or walk deliberately into thoughts that cause you to feel happiness, that means you have joined that broader knowing of the source within you. And you are, for the time of that happiness, a perfect vibrational match to the expansion that you have created through the contrast that you've been living. And for the amount of time that you remain in that not contradicted, happy state. Momentum about what you are asking for happens. And hints of it show up to you. Clues show up to you. Evidence of it shows up to you. So today, as we're chewing with you about things that matter to you, it is our desire to help you to lower resistance. You can't lower your desire. The source within you demands that. But you could stop fighting your own expansion. And that really is what this gathering is about. We've been calling it the art of allowing. The art of allowing who you really are to manifest out here where you can live it fully where everyone else can see it. Mm -hmm.